Hello, I'm Hassan Mozanar, a grad student at MIT. I'm going to present work in collaboration with my advisor, David Sontag, on consistent estimators for him to defer to an expert. To explain the problem we are going to tackle today, we will take as example the task of detecting pneumonia from chest x-rays. This is the task that is currently performed by trained radiologists who, given a patient's x-ray and their medical records, will make a decision whether this patient has pneumonia or not. However, the collection of huge checks x-ray datasets like Chexpert has enabled deep learning algorithms to perform as well and better than trained radiologists at detecting various observations from these x-rays. However, these algorithms are only given access to the x-ray and not the historical medical records. The question is now, we have these really good machine learning algorithms. How do we integrate them into real-world applications such that we achieve better performance than relying solely on the expert or only on the algorithm, and in such a manner that we ease the burden on the radiologist whose time is costly. One possible solution to this problem is to learn a module that we call a deferral module that given only a patient's input, the x-ray, routes the decision to either the expert or the model so that only one of them is queried. If the deferral module says to defer the decision to the expert, then the expert is queried and makes the final decision. On the other hand, if the model allows to cl the classifier to predict, then only the machine learning classifier is queried and the expert is not involved in making any of the decision regarding this patient. This kind of interaction between algorithm and human expert through deferral has already found applications in content moderation. And our work aims to give a theoretical foundation for future applications in healthcare, for example. In this work, we formalized the learning to the first thing and propose a novel consistent surrogate loss for the combined human and expert system, which is obtained through reduction to cost sensitive learning. This law settles an open problem by Nye et al. for finding an assistant surrogate for multi-class rejection learning. We analyze previous approaches in the literature from a consistency point of view and give a generalization bound for minimizing the empirical objective. Finally, we provide detailed experimental evaluation of our method on various tasks. This problem has been attracting more and more attention recently. In 2018, Madras et al. proposed a mixture of expert loss. However, the resulting loss is not consistent and fails empirically. Raghu et al. proposed a confidence score approach that compares expert and algorithm confidence. However, this approach does not allow the classifier to adapt to the expert weaknesses and strength. Even more recently, D et al. gave an approximate algorithm for rich regression, and Wilder et al. combined the mixture of expert loss with the confidence score comparison. This problem is also a generalization of selective classification and learning with a reject option. So let us start by formalizing our problem. We have a covariate space X and the labeled space Y. We want to run a rejector R of X. That is what we refer to as our deferral module that will decide whether to route the decision to either classifier if the output of the rejector is zero if the uh, decision is to route to the classifier, the classifier predicts h of x, and we incur an algorithm loss, L, that depends on the covariate x labeled y and algorithm prediction h of x. On the other hand, if the rejector defers by outputting 1, then the expert is first given an additional context z. In this x-ray example, the additional context contains the medical records in addition to the x-ray which is symbolized by x. The expert predicts m of z, and as a whole in the system, we incur an expert loss that depends on the covariate x label y and actual expert prediction m of z. Our goal is to jointly learn the classifier h of x and rejector r of x to minimize the combined system loss, which is the classifier cost if we predict and the expert cost if we defer. The insight to our approach for this problem is from a reduction to cost-sensitive learning. In cost-sensitive learning, we are given a covariance 
a covariate x and the vector of cost c of dimension the number of classes k plus one and the goal is to pick the class among the one up to k plus one that has the least cost c1 up to c k plus one so the reduction is accomplished by taking the first k classes to signify the label space y and the cost for these k classes is the cost of the algorithm predicting each one of these classes depending on the actual covariate x and label y and the cost for the class k plus one is now the class of deferring to the expert all of x that additionally depends on the expert prediction m of z so this reduction means if we predict any of the first k classes it means the classifier has to predict the target and if we predict the k plus one class, it means we are deferring the decision to the expert and incur the expert loss. So how do we solve this cost-sensitive learning problem? Well, cost-sensitive learning is generalization of multi-class learning. And we use this usual strategy of finding an easily optimizable surrogate loss for the true objective. We propose a natural extension of the cross symmetry loss to the setting. We are going to learn k plus 1 functions, g subscript i for i and k plus 1, and our classifier h of x is going to pick the maximum of these. Our surrogate loss that we introduce is called tilde LCE, and it is the sum of the negative log softmax of each gi weighted by the difference between the maximal cost among all k plus 1 classes and the cost for a particular class, CI. The introduction of the maximum is to make sure that all terms in this loss are positive and we minimize something that is convex. We have that this loss till the LCE is a consistent loss function. What this means is that if we minimize this loss over all measurable functions, G, the minimizer that we obtain will pick the class that has the least expected cost given the covariate x, meaning we pick the class that minimizes the expectation of c of i given x. So let us return to our deferral setting. We will assume that we have data of the target y, covariate x, as well as expert predictions m, m of i, for each sample in our data set. We make the simplest realization of classifier and expert cost as the misclassification error of the target. The objective is to learn a classifier and a rejector in order to achieve the smallest 0, 1 error for the combined system. This is denoted in the loss L0 of 1, which is simply the misclassification error of the combined system. As usual, we will learn Y capital Y functions for each label in our label space, G subscript Y, and our classifier is going to pick the maximum among these capital Y functions. Similarly, we also learn uh, an additional function G subscript B, and we define our rejector by, by being one if G subscript D is bigger than the maximum among all of the rest of the Y functions. This is to make things as a multi-class problem that is augmented with the additional class of deferral. And now the surrogate that we previously introduced to the LCE becomes the last LCE, and is made up of two terms. The first term, make sure that the classifier fits the target. This is really the cross entropy, cross entropy loss. However, we're normalizing by the additional function G subscript D. The second term only appears on examples where the expert is correct, when M subscript i is equal to y subscript i. And this term encourages the system to defer to the expert instead of predicting the target. So on these set, set of examples, we have an equal cost for deferring or predicting the target. As a consequence of the previous proposition, we have that this loss is a consistent estimate for the 0, 1 loss. And furthermore, we get it's a convex upper bound, which is reassuring. So as I just mentioned, this loss, L LCE, has an equal cost for deferring or predicting target on examples with the expert is correct. We found as a heuristic, it is helpful to explicitly encourage or discourage the action of deferral 
by adding a related parameter, alpha. This parameter alpha only appears on examples where the expert is correct. If the expert is correct, we reweight the classifier loss. This is the first term of the loss by alpha. And if not, we, we make sure that we are predicting the target instead of referral. So one can think if alpha is zero on examples where the expert is correct, our only choice is to defer. And if, and if the expert is not correct, then we have to be predicting the target. Moving on to experimental evaluation, we will prevent, present an illustrative experiment using the CIFAR data set. We will, we will be classifying sets of images into two, 10 classes and parameterize our model G as a wide ResNet with 11 output layers. The first 10 are G subscript Y, and the 11th unit is for the feral G subscript D. We simulate multiple synthetic experts as follows. Let K, be, let K be an integer in 1 to 10. Then if the image belongs to the first K classes, the expert is perfect. Otherwise, the expert predicts uniformly at random. So we have a clear region of expertise for the expert. This is the first K classes. We compare approach to three baselines. The first is the mixture of expert baseline of Mahler's et al. The second is the confidence approach of Rago et al. And the third baseline, which we do not learn Oracle, tries to capture the intuitive behavior in this setting. We should be deferring to the expert on the first K classes uh, and predicting on the 10 minus, remaining 10 minus K classes. And this uh, baseline tries to do exactly that with the additional knowledge of K. So on the left, we are showing a plot of combined system accuracy on the y-axis versus k, the number of classes the expert can predict. So each point here corresponds to a particular expert k. As we can see, the mixture of expert loss and, uh, and the learned oracle approach, the mixture of expert loss first fails to learn any behavior for up to k equal to 7. It learns to never defer to the expert. The learned oracle performs a bit better on higher k, but fails initially. Now the confidence score approach in blue outperforms these two baselines and gives a consistent type of behavior. Now we are showing our approach for two different alphas, 0.5 and 1, in red and blue respectively, and red and black respectively. And we can see that our method dominates all of the baselines across all values of k. And this gains are by 1 to 2 on average for confidence and 2 to 3 on average for learned oracle. To gain more insight into the behavior of our method, we plot on the right the accuracy of the classifier on non-deferred examples versus the coverage. We can see that our method not only gets higher coverage, meaning we are predicting a higher percent of the time, but we also have a higher accuracy when we do actually predict. So giving the results, why do we outperform the baselines? The first reason is that of sample complexity. In the figure on the right, we're plotting on the x-axis the training data set size and on the y-axis the system accuracy. As we restrict the training data set size, our gains over the confidence baseline improve by a factor of three and four. The second reason is that our method takes into account classifier confidence. The learned Oracle baseline does not look at the confidence of the classifier and hence suffers. Finally, the third reason is that of consistency. The mixture of expert baseline is not consistent. There is a clear mismatch between the loss and the actual error of the system. Further experimental evidence in support of our method is available in our paper. We have different experiments on chest x-ray the set on 10 modification of tweets, and further results on CIFAR 100. This method has also been applied in urinary tract infection in, our, in a recent paper from our lab in KDD 2020. We also have further results for generalization bounds for the zero one loss objective. Thank you for listening. And if you're interested in our work, please do not hesitate to contact us and read our paper. Thank you again.